Good afternoon and welcome to the CUNE Academy for part two of Vietnam Notes, where we're not just learning history, we're making history. All right, so that was Creedence Clearwater Revival with a song called Fortunate Son, which you can imagine was a piece about the uh, unfairness of the draft. And that came out in 1967 after the Battle of the Green Berets when our tide about the war started to change a little bit. All right, so the big turning point of the war in Vietnam is in 1964 in August when the U.S. is attacked at a place called the Gulf of Tonkin. Now, there are no ground troops in Vietnam, all right? All we have is a uh, naval fleet off the coast of Vietnam here in the Gulf of Tonkin. Now, notice this is off of North Vietnam. Might ask the question, what are we doing there? All right, we're patrolling, we're <clears throat> searching the area because we are still supporting the Viet Cong, or I'm sorry, the South Vietnamese down here, but keep an eye on North Vietnam over here. So what happens, and this is a big mystery, but there is a attack reported on a ship called the USS Maddox. All right? And what follows all right, is Johnson's demand that America protect itself from these further attacks from the um, North Vietnamese. So he goes to Congress and asks them to authorize the use of force um, to prevent further aggression against uh, the North Vietnamese. Now again, context. August of 1964. Okay, what's going on? He's running for election for the first time. He's facing a conservative challenger that's saying we are too weak on communism. We're letting it spread, right? You know, China's become communist. North Korea, we had that war going on. Communism spreading in Europe, all right? There's a big up, up revolution in Hungary in 1956. Um, Vietnam hasn't been going well, so Johnson has to prove he's tough, so he backs this, um, backs this use of force in um, Vietnam. All right. So the resolution reads as follows. The Congress approves and supports the determination of the president as commander in chief to take all necessary measures to repel any armed attack against the forces of the U.S. and prevent further aggression. This literally is a blank check for the president to wage the war any way he sees fit. Because what does prevent further aggression mean? Does it mean bombing the North Vietnamese? Does it mean burning Viet Cong villages? It means anything, all right? Lyndon Johnson said that this was like grandma's nightshirt. It covered everything, all right? You can use your imagination on that if you so choose, all right? So February of 65, all right, the U.S. starts an air attack called Rolling Thunder, which was a program to bomb North Vietnam, try to weaken their defenses, weaken their ability to attack and supply the Viet Cong in South Vietnam, um, and, uh, and, and weaken their uh, countryside, in a sense, all right? So it just starts out in an air war, all right? Uh, but the North Vietnamese started, or the Viet Cong started attacking our air bases and things and what forts we have uh, there in the south. So um, the U.S. Uh, Marines land at Da Nang, which is a port in South Vietnam, to protect the air bases. So these are the first ground troops to enter Vietnam. This is now March of 1965, all right? Gulf of Tonkin was August of 64. Johnson wins the election. In an overwhelming landslide, takes that as he has support for his policies, so he brings his troops in. All right. By 1967, what America is doing is what are called search and destroy missions. All right. Their strategy is to go out and search for Viet Cong villages, find these people supporting the communists and resisting the South Vietnamese, and destroy the villages. All right. And the Secretary of Defense during this time is a guy named Robert McNamara who was the former head of Ford Motor Company, right? He was Kennedy's Secretary of Defense also. So as a businessman, this guy deals in statistics. So the statistic he was really adamant about in the war was publishing the body count. He wanted to let the newspapers and the press know that America killed 200 Vietnamese and lost 30, all right? So people, he thought that if people saw us killing more of them than, than they were of us, that we would be winning the war and people would support. So by 67, Johnson has over 550,000 troops, and people start to not support the war. A big reason why is these images I'm showing you, you're not just seeing these in textbooks, you're not just seeing them in newspapers, you're seeing them on your television every night in the nightly news. You see Americans dying, you see the Vietnamese attacking, and people start to really wonder if what Johnson's telling us is really the truth. That's what's called the credibility gap for President Johnson. All right, another graphic image here. Um, this is January of 68, another big turning point. All right, it's called the Tet Offensive. Tet is the Vietnamese New Year, which traditionally has a ceasefire where both sides would stop fighting. They would go be with their families. It's a very religious holiday for both North and South Vietnam. Well, who's Ho Chi Minh's idol? George Washington. When did Washington have his greatest military victory? 
on Christmas night at the Battle of Trenton. So this is the Battle of Trenton for the Viet Cong, where they're going to attack all of these North or South Vietnamese villages to try to show that they still are a force, that they can go on the offensive, right? This is a South Vietnamese soldier executing a Viet Cong boy. And he, yes, he was shot in the head shortly after this picture was taken. And you see this in your newspaper. What are we fighting for? This is our guy. It's a kid, not much older than 14, 15, and people are you know, starting to wonder, what's this war really all about? So even though America won, they held all the cities, they defended the capital, it made people realize maybe this is, war isn't going well and maybe we're not winning. Okay, So you can see here from the graphs, <clears throat> this is the U.S. troop presence in Vietnam. Notice it continues to rise, and as more troops go, American people think we should be winning, but what's happening? There's more and more deaths, all right? And then after the 68 election, Nixon gets elected, starts to withdraw the troops, and the casualties die as well, and reduce as well. So we basically realized here that this war can't be won, but you can't just pull out, okay? So twice and just as many casualties happened before 68 as happened afterwards. But this is because of the election of 68 and Richard, Nick, uh, Richard Nixon's plan to start ending the war. All right, so we start this program called pacification, which is basically today we call it a counterinsurgency, where you go into the countryside and you try to pacify all of these resistance troops from the Viet Cong and their bases and their uh, attacks and things like that and try to subdue them. And Nixon's plan was called Vietnamization. This is what's most likely to make the AP exam. This is the idea that America is going to train Vietnamese soldiers to fight the war in America's place. So American troops can come home and the Vietnamese can take over and continue to fight the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese. All right, Because um, Nixon promised he would end the war, but he would also give us what's called peace with honor. All right. So final slide here before we'll stop for a second. Nixon's elected in 68, takes office in 69, says he has a secret plan to end the war, All right, but doesn't tell anybody what it is, and he later admitted he had no plan. All right, It was just what he had to say because um, he felt that's what the public wanted to hear to win the war, but they start these peace deals in Paris and things to try and end it. But it's going to be four long years before this is going to come to a close. All right, so that's part two of the Vietnam Notes. We're going to have to come back for part three here, but thanks again for listening to the Kuhn Academy. We hope to see you on the flip side.